R U N D I S L E V Grizzle. So you'd like to hear about how I got into this mess? How a regular guy ended up half a world away, unconscious in the backseat of a car belonging to a guy he thought he could trust but turned out to be his worst enemy? But maybe I'm getting ahead of myself. I should start from the very beginning. It's the best place, after all. My name is Ben Jordan. I was just your average college graduate, 22 years old, with no direction in life and a degree that got me nowhere except a sales job with a local bullseye. As a kid, I was in love with monster movies and anything to do with the paranormal. My family thought it was just a waste of time, except for my grandfather. Grandpa Arthur used to tell me ghost stories and legends he had heard while traveling through Europe in the 1920s. This really fueled my interest in the paranormal. By the time I finished high school, I was obsessed. I wanted to travel and see if the legends were true, but I had to put my dreams aside and go to college to appease my parents. I ended up studying international relations which bored me to tears. So I passed the time by reading my books on the paranormal, listening to Pink Floyd, and dreaming of my ideal career. One day I was browsing the web and found a book called The Paranormal Investigator's Handbook by Professor Quincy Sanborn. I ordered it immediately and read it cover to cover the day it arrived. It was then that I decided I was going to become a paranormal investigator. So after graduating, I asked my parents to loan me some money, advertised my services on the internet, and sat back waiting for the cases to come rolling in. Of course, at the time, I had no way of knowing that the path I'd chosen was going to change my life, in more ways than one. My first case started off with me receiving a phone call, but not one I was very happy about. No, Mom, I, I told you. I've decided to become a freelance paranormal investigator. I know you think it sounds crazy, but just trust me on this one. I think I've seen enough episodes of The X-Files to know that there's something out there. Look, I have to go. I'll call you back in a few days. <sighs> I don't understand. It's been three weeks since I posted about my services on those forums. You'd think someone would have called by now. Uh, hello? Yes, this is Ben Jordan. Uh, sir, please calm down. I, I can't understand what you're saying. A skunk ape murdering people in the Florida Everglades? Okay, I'll go there as soon as I can. What did you say your name was? Ranger Morales. Okay, I'll see you soon. Goodbye. Well, that sure was weird, but I've got a case. Time to buy a ticket to Florida. Hello, I'm Ben Jordan. Are you Ranger Morales? I'm afraid not, young man. I'm glad you've arrived, though. What's the matter? Did something happen to him? Come with me, and I'll show you. Well, here he is. We found him here about an hour ago. My god, what did this to him? It seems that this was the work of a creature that up until now was just a legend. A monster known as the Skunk Ape. I guess I'd better start my investigation then. Feeling slightly nauseated, you examine the body more closely. You pick it up and place it in your purse. Did I say purse? I meant pocket. Excuse me. Yes? What do you know about the skunk ape? I don't know any specific facts. The skunk ape was always more of an urban legend. But I have heard a few things. What exactly would you like to know? What is a skunk ape exactly? It's similar to a yeti or a sasquatch, but we call it a skunk ape because its trademark is a horrible smell. Some have described it as being a mix of rotten eggs, moldy cheese, and dung. That sounds... unpleasant. It is. But the good thing is that that characteristic will make it somewhat easier to track down. I guess. Has anyone actually seen the skunk ape? The only ones who have are dead. So there aren't any survivors or anything I could talk to? I'm afraid not. 
So if you haven't seen it, do you know what it looks like? Not for certain, but the rumors of its appearance are all the same. It's supposed to be seven feet tall, weigh about 300 pounds, and have a nasty temper. Glad I asked. Are there any other animals in the park that might be capable of attacking people like this? Not really. The Florida panther might be capable of it, but there are so few of them left it seems unlikely that they would be to blame. Besides, they usually keep to themselves. Have you found any evidence as to what might be responsible? The only thing we've found so far is a large footprint near one of the murder scenes. I see. That's all for now. Okay. This is a nice park you've got here. Thanks. We rangers pride ourselves on keeping this state preserve as pristine and beautiful as we can. It's really a shame that our nation's wetlands are constantly disappearing. Yes, I agree. Can you tell me how to get around the area? Of course. This area isn't really that big. Over there you can see the roof of the visitor's center. Near that is a ranger station and of course there's the forest too. Here, take this brochure. It's got a map so you can find your way. Thanks. Tell me about yourself. Me? My name is Ernie. I've been a ranger here at Everglades National Park for over 30 years. I love nature. I guess it runs in my family since my brother moved out west to become a medicine man. Aside from that, I really don't know what else to tell you. So, now that I know more or less what I'm dealing with, what do you suggest I do? Well, that's a good question. Obviously, we need to find out why the skunk ape has decided to start killing people, and stop it from doing so again. As a park ranger, I'm morally opposed to killing it, but as it has already taken more than one human life, that may unfortunately be the only solution. I think your best bet is to go out into the forest and see if you can find out if the skunk ape has a lair, or some place it stays regularly. Of course, you shouldn't go alone, but most of the other rangers have been too scared to go out into the woods since the killing started. I'd go with you myself, but I don't think I'm up for much excitement anymore. You said most of the rangers were too scared to go into the woods. Are there any who aren't? Well, there is one guy, Ranger Rick. But I don't know if he'll want to go. Tell me about Ranger Rick. He hasn't been working here very long, but he's one of our best rangers. The thing about him is, he's extremely superstitious when it comes to nature. He might go into the woods with you, but he might have some weird reason for not wanting to. Well, right now he's my best option. Do you know where I can find him? He should be at the ranger station. Thanks for all your help. No problem. If you have any more questions, don't hesitate to ask. You open up the brochure and look at the map. Can I ask you about some stuff? Sure, what's up? You're Ranger Rick, aren't you? Yes, I am. What can I do for you? My name is Ben Jordan. I was called out here by Ranger Morales. Oh, you're the paranormal investigator guy, aren't you? That's me. Ernie told me I should talk to you. Okay, so talk to me. Ernie suggested I should find someone to go into the woods with and try to track down the skunk ape. He said you were the guy I should go to. Well, Ben, I'd love to go with you, really, I would. But with the sudden appearance of the skunk ape, things in the woods haven't exactly been in balance lately. I wouldn't feel right going out there without some protection. I've got a rifle. No, I didn't mean that kind of protection. Well, I guess we could look for a pharmacy or something. But I should tell you, that's not my thing. I mean, there's nothing wrong with... Ben, I'm talking about a nature amulet. Oh, a nature amulet, of course. What's a nature amulet? It's an amulet that wards off evil spirits and attracts good-natured spirits. So if I can get you one, will you come with me? Sure. Okay, so how do I do it? It's complicated. Nature amulets just don't grow on trees, you know. The base is made from an ancient earth object, like a bone or a rock. You'll need some animal hair to make a string so the amulet can be worn. And the amulet needs to be blessed by a shaman. Got it? Yeah, I'll see what I can do. Okay, I'm going now. Take it easy. 
You search through the drawers and find a box of diuretic water pills. You open up the brochure and look at the map. Hello. Hey there, young man. Tell me about yourself. My name is Lloyd Daniels. I've been living in Florida for the past 20 years. I'm an active member in the community and a staunch environmentalist. Among the things I do are set up fundraisers, beach cleanups, and protests. What exactly do you protest? The possible threat to the environment. You have no idea how angry it makes me to see environmental injustices committed. If I see someone so much as look at a tree the wrong way, I'll go off like a rocket. You seem very dedicated to your cause. And how? See you around. Hug a tree for me. Hello. Hello, and welcome to the Everglades National Park Visitor Center. How can I help you? What can you tell me about the Visitor Center? Well, everything in here is pretty self-explanatory. I guess I can tell you more about that display case over there, and the animatronic Mikasuki in the next room. What can you tell me about the animatronic Mikasuki? It's a robot of an Indian. It's tacky, politically incorrect, and it gives you a blessing if you put in a coin. I see. Anything else? It's broken. Which is probably for the best if you ask me. That's all the information I needed. Enjoy your visit! In a fit of kleptomania, you decide to take the whole roll of toilet paper. You never know when it might come in handy after all. With childish delight, you toss the entire roll of toilet paper into the toilet bowl. You flush the toilet. Oh dear, it seems that your throwing the toilet paper into the toilet has caused it to become clogged. You take the opportunity to slip a water pill into the receptionist's drink when he isn't looking. It quickly dissolves. The receptionist takes a big gulp from his mug. For a while nothing much happens, but then... Oh man, that water went right through me. Excuse me a second, will ya? Oh, I don't believe this. The toilet is broken. I have to find some place to pee. Thank goodness for that tree over there. What the? Hey! Just what in the name of Gaia do you think you're doing? Ah, well, the bathroom isn't working, so I thought I, I'd just... Drown this poor tree in your vile waste product? How would you like it if someone decided to relieve themselves on you? Uh, I guess I wouldn't. Of course you wouldn't. I suppose you think it's okay just because it's a tree. Well, I, I mean, it's not like you can feel it. Oh, is that what you think? I've got some information for you, sonny boy. The man proceeds to yell at the poor receptionist, who looks as though he fears for his life. This could go on for quite some time. Since the receptionist is currently occupied, you swipe a shark tooth from the display case. You quickly take the sign into your possession. You open up the brochure and look at the map.
Feeling no remorse, you viciously stab the tree with the pointed end of the picket sign. If the environmentalist saw what you were using his sign for, he'd kill you. Being careful not to get any on your hands, you soak the hair in the sap. You manage to weave the sticky hair into a necklace and attach it to the shark tooth. You stick the pen into the slot, and whatever was blocking it falls through the machine and into the coin return below. Hmm, it seems your tampering with the coin slot has activated the robot. Hello, welcome to Everglades National Park. I am Sharpen Sawgrass, the Shaman. For your generous donation, I will now give you good fortune by performing the Blessing Dance. The robot begins some horrible gyration. This really is the most insulting thing you've seen in a long time. You reach into the coin slot and find a quarter and an odd little piece of carved rock. You place the amulet in the robot's hand. With the amulet on the robot, you insert the quarter and hope this does the trick. Hello, welcome to Everglades National Park. I am Sharpen Sawgrass, the Shaman. For your generous donation, I will now give you good fortune by performing the Blessing Dance. After the robot concludes its little jig, you remove the amulet from its hand. It hasn't exactly been blessed by an authentic shaman, but you hope Rick won't notice. You open up the brochure and look at the map. Here, I got you your amulet. Hey, great. Okay, we'll be ready to go as soon as I get a few supplies together. I'll meet you outside the station in a few minutes then. Here we are. This area is where we found all the other victims of the skunk ape. And we're going to camp here? Yeah, the skunk ape is probably nearby. I think this will be a good place to start tracking him from. How exactly are we going to find him? We'll go out looking for him later. In the meantime, I'm going to start setting up the tent. You can look around if you want, but be careful you don't get lost. It may not seem like it, but it's really easy to lose your way out there. In fact, here, take my compass. It should come in handy. Thanks, I guess. You look through Rick's backpack and find a small bottle of nasal decongestant. Hey Rick, mind if I borrow this for a little while? Not a problem. Be my guest. You spray the nasal decongestant in your nose and take a deep breath. That sure cleared out your sinuses. Taking a deep breath, you notice a strange odor which seems to be coming from the west. You take a deep breath. You think you smell something to the north. You inhale deeply. There's definitely something smelly to the east. You 
you take a deep breath, you think you smell something to the north. Taking a deep breath, you notice a strange odor which seems to be coming from the west. Getting a lung full of air, you determine that there's an odor coming from the south. Taking a deep breath, you notice a strange odor which seems to be coming from the west. You take a deep breath. You think you smell something to the north. Taking a deep breath, you notice a strange odor which seems to be coming from the west. Upon entering the mound, you're struck with a distinct odor of rotten eggs, moldy cheese, and dung. Man, it stinks in here. I guess I found the skunk ape's lair. Searching the nest, you find a large stick. Striking the steel compass and flint arrowhead together creates a spark. You strike the compass and arrowhead, and light the stick with the resulting spark. Your heart beating quickly, you toss the lit stick into the pit. Rick! What's the matter, Ben? You look like you've seen a ghost. I found the skunk ape's lair. Was it inside? Luckily, no. But I looked around and found a big hole in the ground. Inside the hole, I found a whole bunch of packets of cocaine. Cocaine? Are you sure? Well, I doubt the skunk ape is collecting sugar. Why would there be a stash of drugs in the skunk ape's lair? Your guess is as good as mine. Well, good job on your discovery, Ben. I'm sure we'll figure out the deal with the drugs. So what do we do now? We should check out the lair together. But I think we should wait until dark just in case the skunk ape is around. We have a better chance of not being detected under the cover of darkness. Okay, sounds good to me. I've just finished setting up camp. Why don't you get a fire started and then we'll cook some dinner. Alright, I'm on it. And I realized that a career in international relations wasn't what I wanted, so I decided to become a freelance paranormal investigator. That's an interesting career option. I don't think there'd be much call for that sort of thing nowadays. But then here you are, so I guess you made the right choice. I've been wondering about something. Has the skunk ape ever been active before the set of attacks? Not that I can remember. I mean, there were stories about it, but never any actual evidence of its existence. It's weird that it would just start attacking people for no reason. Well, maybe not no reason. There has to be some explanation for the drugs in the cave. Speaking of which, I think it's about time we headed over there and checked it out. Have you got your rifle handy? Yeah, I've got it right here. You know how to use it, right? Um, well, no, actually. I've never really fired a gun before. You better let me carry it then, just in case we get into trouble. Okay, here you go. Alright, let's get going. So this is it, huh? This is it. Are you sure it's a good idea to be going in alone? If the skunk ape is in there, I'll just come back out. Okay, I've got you covered. Much to your relief, you see that the skunk ape has not returned to its lair yet. Suddenly, you hear some commotion outside. Rick! Be careful, Ben. This thing means business. All right, you stinking ape. Get ready to meet whatever crazy entity made you. What? You're going to shoot it? Do you know how much the Smithsonian would pay to have one of these things on display? I can make enough money to get out of this swamp and start a real life. But, but I thought you said you liked being a park ranger. 
You try spending your days being bitten by mosquitoes and lectured by smelly old hippies and tell me how you'd like it. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to shoot this animal. Rick, look out! What the? After running for what feels like hours, you finally seem to have lost the skunk ape. Now it's just a question of finding your way out of this forest. You decide to see if anyone is home. Just a minute. No, could that be at this time of night? Who is it? My name's Ben Jordan. I'm being chased by a giant monster. Oh, yeah. That sounded perfectly reasonable. Crazy kid. Alright, hold on a sec. Come on in. Thanks, sir. I really appreciate you letting me in. Call me Jed. You ain't from around these parts, are you? No, actually, I'm not. So what are you doing out in the woods this late at night? Have you ever heard of the skunk ape? Did you say the skunk ape was chasing you? Yeah, you know about it? Boy, you've been living in the woods as long as I have. You've seen everything. How'd the skunk ape find you anyway? Well, I found him, actually. I was looking for his lair with a ranger from the park. I see. And did you find it? Yeah, we were looking into that when the skunk ape showed up and killed the ranger. You don't say. Well, Ben, I'm gonna go call a friend of mine. He'll be able to help you get out of here and back to safety. Make yourself at home in the meantime. I'll be right back. Jed disappears into the next room. You're left with a somewhat uneasy feeling, particularly because you thought you noticed his attitude change a bit when you mentioned the skunk ape's lair. Well, I guess I should have told you not to come in here when I said make yourself at home. Wait a minute, those were your drugs in the skunk ape's lair? That's right. I was wondering how you'd manage to get away. Usually the skunk ape manages to protect my stash from anyone who gets too close. So you've been using the skunk ape to guard your drugs? How? It's pretty simple, really. I go into the city and steal the drugs for myself off the ships in the port. Then I hide them out here in the middle of the woods, but the police wouldn't think to come look. One day I happened to find the skunk ape's lair. It was going to do me in until I remembered I had some cocaine in my pocket. Don't tell me you... Yeah, I gave the skunk ape a little taste and he loved it. From that day forward he was like a big stinky pet. That's so cruel. So I took advantage and started using his cave. I even managed to get an electronic collar on him so I could give him a little shock if he gets out of control. Or if I need to give him a call. Like right now. You're a sick bastard, you know that? I've been called worse. Now say hello to my little friend. Thinking quickly, you lunge towards the table. Ben, you're back already? What happened? It's a long story, but the skunk ape won't be a problem anymore. What about Rick? He... didn't make it. What a shame. Well, I guess you've done your job, so I'll write you a check for your services. Thanks, Ernie. I'd stick around, but I'm in a desperate need of a shower. Alright, Ben. Take care of yourself. So that's how I broke into the whole paranormal investigating thing, and managed to survive it. Needless to say, the next few months would be filled with more mysteries and danger than I ever thought possible. But those are stories for another time.
Senor, I have good news. We found another one. Excellent. <laughs>